Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris. I'm in a car. Going on the way to Dutch. Little Dutch bros. Happy Friday to every one of you. Hope you're having a, gonna have a nice weekend, a restful weekend, a fun weekend, whatever kind of weekend you want. Hope it's a good one. Um, anyways, it's Car Chat with Chris. Uh, CCWC. <laughs> you guys came up with that. Uh, got some, I have some thoughts. <clears throat> So I had one of my friends, he just emailed me his resume, uh, wanted me to look at his resume and try to make some recommendations on how to, to spruce it up. He's having difficulty uh, getting any job, like interviews. <clears throat> and so I was talking to him last night about it and um, he's like, can you take a look at my resume? I was like, sure. So that's what I'm thinking about. So I'm gonna tell you about my experience with resumes and how that works and uh, like, if anybody's looking for a job maybe this will maybe this will help maybe it won't or maybe if you know somebody maybe you could tell them these little pointers the point of a resume and most people miss it to be honest with you the point of a resume is to be make yourself seem interesting enough that they would like to interview you that is 100% the point of your resume that is it nothing more nothing less than that most people think the resume is going to get you the job. That's not true. The resume is not gonna get you a job. The resume is just gonna get you to the point of where you're at an uh, interview. Then the interview is what gets you the job. So you have to be, you have to, your resume has to stand out enough to make you interesting enough so that way people would want to interview you. So when you look at your resume, when you're like looking at it and sending it off, Look at it through that type of eyes, that type of uh, you know visual acuities. To say to yourself, "Is this make me interesting enough? Like, would I want to meet me if I got this in the email? Would I care? Would I stand out?" And so you need to make your resume stand out. It has to pop somehow that it catches their your eye, their person's eye. So <clears throat> when I worked in the corporate world for a long time. Um, I had to go through a whole bunch of class. I got certified in like interviewing and hiring and all that kind of stuff. Most large corporations have a recruiter or like, you know, uh, somebody that's like an HR maybe. And like when I would open a job posting for my division, I would go to them and they were like, they would tell me like, what are you, what are you looking for? I would then write all the scope and everything of what I was looking for in that person, give it to them. And then they would do the first round of, first round of, eliminations so like they would all the emails would come in that people applying for that position the recruiter would look at it the HR person look at it they would call you know 50% of them but keep in mind that recruiter doesn't have the job knowledge that I do all right because I'm the one hiring the position they're just there to help me <clears throat> so they're passing on what they think are the best candidates for me to interview so you have to make your resume pop and stick out for that particular recruiter. You know, put some things that are interesting. Like, uh, I mean, you just, you've got to make it interesting. If it's like Times New Roman, all black and white and just like job, it's not as exciting. You know, you want to make it look good. And that very top, the top of your resume, there's like a little paragraph where you can write a paragraph. That's the hook. That's the thing. That's what. There, that's what the recruiter is going to read. Is that that little thing there? And because they don't understand, like, like if you're doing like civil engineering, they're not going to understand all this stuff about civil engineering, your job experience. But they'll understand that paragraph, what you're saying. So that top little part of the paragraph of your resume, like, I always put objective. My, I always put on top of my resume, objective. I'm applying for this position, and then I would say right off the bat, reason why I'd be a good fit for that company. I say I'm applying for this position because I'm going to make an immediate impact in blah 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 whatever. I say that. And so that way, usually that would get you into the interview. Then the second part of job job hunting is, is the interview. Now, interviewing is a skill. It is a skill and a lot of people, they're not very good at it. Uh, they get nervous. They, um, they, they think that their resume is going to prop them up. So they'll come in the interview and they'll have like their resume in front of them and like they will review back to their own resume. Not really a good tactic. When you interview or if you're gonna go interview for a job, this is what I always tell people, 
when I was practicing and myself is you need to practice that interview, practice it over and over and over. Practice in front of the mirror, practice in front of your spouse uh, or a friend, and then write down questions that you think they're gonna ask. I would always go in, and like when I was applying for certain positions, I would go in and, and search the internet, say interview questions for that position, and I would try to review a bunch of the most common interview questions. So that way when I got there, I was able to like, you know, present well. The other thing that people don't understand in an interview is pausing. For whatever reason, I don't know why, when you're in an interview and somebody asks you a question, we feel that we have to answer it immediately, and like, like we're supposed to know all this, like bam, 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 bam. And we think that that shows that we have um, mastered whatever topic we're talking about. If you don't need a pause, then just go for it. Pausing's fine, and all you have to do is say, you know what, That's a. this is what I always say, this is a trick. When somebody asks me a question, I would do one of two things. I'd say, wow, that's a fantastic question. Let me think about that. Okay, I've come to my answer. And it just takes a few seconds to kind of clear out all the cobwebs and then go on the answer. Or the other trick is, I would repeat the question back to them. When, when the whole time I'm repeating the question back to them, I'm formulating my answer. I'm like, oh, so you're asking, just to be clear, you're asking me, what's the fastest way to increase implementation or onboarding within 90 days with a new hire? How would you do that? Is that what you're asking me just to be clear? And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, that would give me some time to uh, formulate my answers. T and it's okay to take a pause. Tell them, say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of a pause. Now, when I would do interviews, of course, we'd ask job related questions. We wanna know your history. Like, tell me about like, like what, what experience do you have with whatever we're interviewing for, right? Like if I was doing enrollment, I uh, said, so tell me your experience of you, what enrollment companies have you worked for or what enrollment departments, I would want to get to know them a little bit better. Uh, the thing is, in an in interview, it's actually illegal. Most people don't know this. I can't really ask you any personal questions. I can't ask you like, are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, like, you can't ask that. That's actually illegal. A lot of people don't know that. Hi, how are you? So good, how are you? Good, 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 good. Oh, your nails look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, all right. Okay, hold on. And then, you know what? Let's do, let's just go to an old school. Ready? Okay, gotcha. I'm going to try this one. This is called the Bob Marley Mocha. Awesome. I want half Breve, half chocolate milk. And then do you want an iced or hot? Iced. Gotcha. Perfect. Half Breve, half chocolate milk. Yes. Half Breve, half chocolate milk. Already, and then and what size? Medium. Okay. Iced. Let me walk up with you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Are you uh, cold? I am not actually. It was a little colder this morning, but it's it's all right today. Is it okay today? Yeah, it's okay today. All right, it's gonna be eight twenty three for you. Okay. I had to pause it when I was ordering Amanda's drink. She's trying something new. She's kind of trying something. She's doing a sugar free Irish cream americano. Uh, the Irish cream is just that's the that's the flavoring, and then she'll add her own cream when she gets back. To the house anyways back to interview so i technically cannot offer ask you any personal questions you can't ask religion you can't ask relationships um things like that now a lot of interviews don't know that and they make that mistake that'd be a big deal you can't do that but you if you're being interviewed i find it's always helpful to provide a little bit of background a little personal information so that way the people can feel like they know you. Because the point of the interview is this, is when you leave, you want them to like you. You want them to like you. Because if they like you, at the end of the day, like sometimes, oh man, some days it was brutal. I would interview like 50 people in a day. It became mind numbing, right? Mind numbing, you're like interviewing. And at the end of the day, um, what would make you stand out to the the crowd in the interview? And if something you if you said something you know witty or uh, interesting or whatever, because I'm you have to be honest with you. Most people, most of the people are about the same level of you know expertise, right? You're just trying to find the right fit for the company for you. So you have to say something that that way they'll remember who you are at the end of the interview. 
Uh, so you can provide a little information if you're being interviewed. Like I would say something like this. So yeah, like uh, I just moved to California. I love this area here. I'm excited to be part of the, of, the, of, of this of this company's culture. And then I always drop a line. I say I did a little research. And this seems like it has a good company culture. You guys and just kind of talk about the company. You provide a little bit about yourself, or you say stuff like, you know, I'm because they'll ask you like tell us all about stuff. Say when, when in the interviews they'll say tell me a little bit about yourself. A lot of times people think that means tell me more about your work experience, which is true a little bit, but you want to, you want to stand out. So I would say things are a little bit off the wall. I would say, well, I'm an avid comic book collector. I love comic books. It's one of my favorite things to do. A comic book collector. I say, I got involved in sales enablement in this time. And, and, uh, and then I would talk about this. It's just something different that most people wouldn't say. So you can say something like that. That way they could kind of remember you. The other thing is this, this is where most people just fumble and just drop the ball. It's a sports analogy. I apologize. But at the, when I would interview it, I was asked people, I would say, okay, I say, I'm going to ask you this question. I said, tell me why should we hire you for this position? And I eventually started having to put caveats on this particular question because I feel like this is a softball question. I'm asking them, why should we hire you? And then the person should just be like, rapid fire. These are all the reasons you should hire me. I would say 80% of the time I would get the same answer and I hated it. They would say this. I'm like, hi. Okay. This has been a fantastic interview. Uh, Vanessa, you've been awesome. I love it. Now we're at the, this is my last question. This is exactly how I do it. I'm like, this is our last question. So I want you to tell me why should we hire you? Why, what are the reasons we should hire you for this position? Bam. And then you know what almost everybody would say? Because I'm a hard worker. Because I'm a hard worker. That is the worst answer you could give. Because I'm assuming you're a hard worker. Uh, it's always in the, as an assumption I'm gonna make about you that you're a hard worker, right? So now that's, if that's your only reason why I should hire you is because you're a hard worker, that's not a good reason. So eventually I started doing this in the interviews. I would start saying this. I'm like, okay, Vanessa, I said, we're at the end of our interview. I've got one last question for you. And to say, uh, I'm going to ask you this question. The question is, why should we hire you? But, I'm going to put a little caveat. Please don't say it's because you're a hard worker. I already assume that you're a hard worker. So go ahead and tell me why should we hire you? You would be surprised how many people could not answer that question. They just couldn't answer it. Good morning. How are you? Doing all right in yourself. Good. Good. There we go. Have a good yeah, one. Day, you too. They just came out to us. I'm bum driving the window. Have a good day. You're the best, guys. Okay. This is called the Bob Marley special. It's a kind of a banana, a chocolate. Oh, oh it's so good. It tastes like chocolate bananas. <laughs> half brevet, half chocolate milk. Order the Bob Marley special with half brevet, half chocolate milk. Oh, it's good. All right, so you'd be surprised how many people could not answer that question. Why we should hire you? And if you can't answer that question, then you're not prepared for the interview. I mean, you should be going in there. And like, I would, good answers would be like, well, the reason you should hire me it's, this is what I would want to hear. I want to hear people say, say, I'm confident in my skills. I think I'll make an immediate impact within the first 30 days of being here. That would be a great answer. Say, uh, another reason you hire me is that I understand the process of what you're trying to do and I'll be a valuable team member for you. I'll be able to lighten your load. I'll be able to do more work and get, get more work and have more throughput done by having me on your team than not having me on your team. Some kind of answer like that. And the last thing is I would always, I, I would ask off the wall questions. I would ask questions that they were not prepared for, that they haven't, no matter how much internet research they've done. Cause I want to see how fast they can think on their feet. So this is like one question like I would ask. I'd ask this question a lot of time. I would say, I'd say, hey, just out of curiosity, tell me what's the worst thing you've ever done that you got away with? I didn't really care about the answer. I wanted to see how well they can handle pressure. Some people just folded with that question. I'm like, hey, I'm just curious. What's the worst thing you've ever done that you got away with? 
some people they just couldn't think of it. Uh, uh, nothing. I've, I've, you know, okay, they're lying. That they're, now I know they're a liar. Um, other people, if sometimes if they give like a bad answer, like fraud, then you're like, okay, I don't want to work with you. But people, I tell them, I say, take your time. Tell me what's something you, you've been. And the people who are good at that would think it through and then t usually tell a funny story like, well, when I was in fourth grade, I went down to the the gas station and I stole a candy bar. I felt really bad about it. But and then, but the way I did it is I put it in my backpack. My friend distracted the other guy or whatever it was. I just want to see how fast they can think on their feet. That's a skill that some people have and some people don't have. And the reason that was important to me, because most of the jobs that I was hiring for were high pressure jobs. And so I needed to have people who can think on the fly and come up and create answers rather than, I don't want somebody who has to run back to me every time there's a problem. Like, Chris, what do I do here? I want them, I want their own problem solving skills. This is a really weird card chat, Chris. I apologize. I got distracted. So I'm, I'm looking at my friend's resume. It's got me thinking about it. This drink is good. Would I put in the top five? Probably not, but it's top 10 worthy. Um, I will say this, you have to like the banana flavor. The banana flavor is subtle. It's not like boom pow, like banana, but uh, it is there. So you gotta like the banana flavor and it's chocolate. I mean, it's, it's, it's very refreshing. This is the type of drink. Oh, you can taste banana. This is the type of drink you want on a summer day. I think, I think this is a good summer relaxation drink. Like I picture myself sitting on the porch drinking this drink is relaxing. Okay, all right guys, talk to you later. Have a good day, bye-bye.